Hi, beloved. I've just finished reading the most recent message from a young person considering suicide. We receive dozens of these kinds of messages from people all over the globe considering taking their lives. I try to respond to each one, and I think I have so far, but it is alarming that there are so many people out there who are considering taking their lives, and some, sadly, do. But I trust that many, or most, the vast majority, do not. Because when I respond to each person, I share with them an insight that I gleaned from heaven. I'd like to read to you a response to one of those individuals, a teenager, who messaged us. And I'm not going to mention names, obviously, but this is the just of how I generally respond to those who are thinking of taking their lives. And I'm going to read it here. I feel your pain, and God feels your pain to the utmost and he weeps with you. When I was your age, I'm talking to a teenager now, I too considered taking my life. I thought many of the same thoughts. Thankfully, I lived with the motto, quote, this too shall pass, end of quote. Indeed, it did pass, but it seemed to take forever before things shifted. I want to share with you something about my experience with Jesus after I died that may help you to understand how important you are to God. Jesus showed me a void in the darkness. It was lifeless, like a black screen. So I asked Jesus to explain this, and he said that the void was a place of lost purposes. Jesus told me that each person has a singular purpose and that only that person can fulfill God's plans for her or him. And when someone does not fulfill their purpose in the moments that God gives them, there is a void that exists for all of eternity. No one but the person God intends for his purpose in the moments of their life, can fulfill those purposes. Each of God's children is irreplaceable. That means, and I mentioned the name of the person, that there are thousands of moments God has planned for you. Maybe it's just a smile for someone in need. Maybe it's bringing some of your wisdom to others. Maybe it's creating something that will bless others. All of those are in your future, waiting for you to complete the plans God has for you. Plans to prosper you and bless you for good. And I cite the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, one of my favorites. I encourage you to memorize it. Please don't be short-sighted in your young life. Know that God will give you the victory in the end. And you don't want to appear before Jesus feeling grieved that you failed to to fulfill all of God's wonderful plans for you. You will want to hear these words after you have lived a long life. Well done my good and faithful servant. I'm praying for you, and Jesus is praying for you too. Please don't give up. I'm certainly glad that I did not. Beloved, I encourage you to pray right now. There are thousands upon thousands throughout the globe who are feeling like this young person, that they just want to give up. 
And the stories are heart rendering. Some of the things that we've heard are just beyond mention because to mention them would just be too much. But out there in the world, there are those who are suffering today. Some are living victoriously despite their suffering, while others are feeling that they can no longer bear the burden that day in and day out, every second of every day, bears upon them. But the good news is, beloved, that each of us has a purpose. And it's not a purpose in the grandiose scheme of things, oftentimes. It actually, our pur- there, it's a purpose in the moments of our life and going to the store and seeing someone and praying for them, even if they don't know that you're praying for them. It's in the little things, the small things that God finds the greatest return. It's in the small things, beloved, that God really impacts our world the most. It's the things that he gives us to do that only we can do and no one else. And if we do not do those things, moment by moment, day by day, for as long as God has us on this earth, there will be a void that's created for all of eternity. And one day, you and I will see that void. And our hope, my hope, is for you and me as well, that there would be no void created because of something that you and I did not do. Take joy, beloved of the Lord, because today God has given you the opportunity to serve him. That's right, to serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who calls you his child. God bless you. And if indeed you are in Christ Jesus and know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care and God bless.